our experience at the NTSB tells us that these events could happen again, will happen again. She's been an outspoken voice since the East Palestine derailment, from hotbox detectors and train makeup to a lack of workforce and integrating new technology, NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy says these are all issues that must be addressed. With respect to rail safety generally, uh, it's extremely safe uh, versus if you put that traffic on our nation's roads. With that said, the NTSB has issued many recommendations to improve rail safety prevent, to prevent uh, this type of tragedy that occurred in East Palestine from uh, occurring in the first place. If only our recommendations were implemented. Hamandi has repeatedly said the East Palestine derailment could have been avoided. Are you still confident that this disaster was preventable and what are your what are the specific recommendations that you want to see done first? 100% preventable. This was a preventable tragedy. And we have 190 rail safety recommendations on the books today that no one has taken action on. We have 380 others that were closed because people took unacceptable action. Those over 500 recommendations, we don't need to wait. We shouldn't wait for the next tragedy. We should take action now. Yet, with almost 200 different calls for changes, Hamandi acknowledges the lack of progress. She says it's unacceptable. It's not just frustrating to me. It's frustrating to the investigators on the ground. Because when we show up on scene after a tragedy, they know this was preventable and that we've issued a recommendation previously that would have prevented that. When there's a loss of life, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible and inexcusable that action wasn't taken. There's a lot we can improve uh, on our rail network when it comes to safety and we should take immediate action. Uh, so there are measures that we could take today to improve safety a lot more than it has been done so far. She points out better technology can make rail safer. In general, there are a lot of safety technologies out there that, a lot of technology that can improve safety. I like to remind folks that technology is there to supplement humans, supplement the workforce. It's not there to supplant the workforce. We asked Hamandi if she believes lobbying plays a role in the lack of regulation. There's a lot of focus on the cost over the benefits. The NTSB's job, which I love, is to tell you the truth. This is what would prevent you from, re from prevent this from reoccurring. It's not what's fiscally available and digestible. It's not what might get you there. It's always will get you uh, to the end result of preventing tragedy. Uh, but a lot of times in rulemaking, cost becomes part of the factor. And that's something that the Federal Railroad Administration needs to grapple with. One year later, how can communities be safer if there is no new regulation or no new mandates put into place when nearly half of the U.S. population lives within two miles of a major rail line? Yeah, I, I think that is a really important point. I think communities deserve to see action. What I will say is there's a lot we've already put out there that can be acted on. There are some things that remain for our final investigative report that we hope that I will push for action to be taken on immediately. Do you feel there was a lack of transparency after the train disaster in East Palestine? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the public, uh, the, com the surrounding communities in Pennsylvania and Ohio, uh, they were really at a loss. Uh, they needed information. They needed health information, environmental information, which is different than what we provide, but they also needed information about then what, what we were finding. They deserve 
that, and they need it. Do you think that based on what we've seen, the same derailment could still happen in another community under the current standards? Absolutely. It can happen today. It can happen an hour from now. What we need to ensure is that safety measures are taken to prevent that from occurring, but in the worst case situation where it does occur again, we're going to be there and we're going to remind everyone of what we've said for decades and what needs to be implemented. We are a very small agency with a really big voice and we're not afraid to use it. Hamandi says that she will return to East Palestine in the spring for another hearing that will detail the NTSB's final investigative report. At that time, the NTSB will discuss all that's been found and lay out recommendations. Now, circling back to that close call reporting system that Madison mentioned earlier in the program, that's the program where rail workers can confidentially report close calls and improve rail safety. Norfolk Southern again promised to join that system earlier this week. A memorandum of understanding with Norfolk and the FRA is expected within weeks. Should that happen, we want to point out that the agreement will only cover workers in Georgia, Indiana, and Virginia. That does it for this 101 West program. If you'd like to email us a topic that you would like us to investigate, send it to watchdog at WFMJ.com. I'm Derek Steyer. Have a great night.